Hi everyone, this is Ryan Hoyne, AK Massage. And today we have Nancy. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I became a massage therapist in 1974 and studied with the great and awesome J. Victor Shear in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And that started me on a voyage. I also studied at the same time with Sensei Nakazano. And that was a Eastern and Western adventure because I studied uh, Aikido, macrobiotics, um, uh, acupuncture, and the Kota Tama principle. At the same time, I went to Western massage school. Um, and one day I, I went over and I saw Jay and I said, Jay, we have to lower all the tables because they're just too high <laughs> and we have to adjust our body mechanics and uh, use our legs and our bodies and our momentum and our body weight um, and we'll save our hands that way. So that was really the beginning. And then uh, Jay wanted me to stay there and, and help run his school after I graduated and I went east because my mom got sick and uh, I ended up staying on the east coast and uh, becoming secretary of the Massachusetts chapter of the, uh, of the AMTA um, uh, for Perry Plouffe. And, um, eventually started the main chapter for the AMTA and I uh, in my school in 1980, the Downey School of Massage. Is there anything you haven't done yet? I don't think so. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, have, I feel blessed to be able to be a massage therapist for 40 years, to, um, to love what I do, to be able to have my soul and my profession. I just love that. Also written a textbook, Kinesiology for Manual Therapy, so I've become an author, a school director, an educator, a CE provider, um, author. And just I've kind of done it all in it. And I've only really been in one profession, but I've been able to be creative enough to do all these things in the years, raise a family, be out in the country and, uh, and travel and be a part of these organizations. What kind of changes have you seen? It's massive, you know, they're, they're, it's very interesting to be in a profession for four decades and to see a massive amount of change. I used to start out and be a part of giving presentations uh, back even in the 70s and I'd ask people, um, how many people in the room have ever had massage and maybe one or two people would put their hands up. Now you ask that question and everybody in the room puts their hand up. Uh, so that is pretty much you know, one of the biggest changes is that massage is a household word and it's, it's part of our culture now where it wasn't in the 70s. Um, and also, even though doctors don't necessarily refer, they don't necessarily not know about us. Um, and secretively, they might have their wife or they may participate in getting massage, uh, even though they may not know enough quite yet about, about how to refer to us well or how to integrate. But that said, there are so many different avenues where we're integrating. And maybe the fact is, is that we've slid in the back door um, of so many institutions and integrated in so many ways that we really don't know how we even did it. For instance, oncology and massage. You can't go into a hospital and get an application to be a massage therapist, but uh, through a credentialing process, you're apt to be able to work on the oncology department and work with people who are receiving chemotherapy uh, and give them massage. So it's interesting of how we are going in these different avenues um, and, and working with healthcare. Did you ever predict I had a vision. I really did. And uh, in the 80s, uh, when I was on the board of the AMTA, we were changing tires at 55 miles per hour. And, you know, it just, it was, it was really, it went so fast, it was just, it was a roller coaster ride in, in so many ways. Um, I did not predict um, that the market would get so flooded with massage therapists, especially ones that maybe not 
were well prepared um, for the career field and that the, there would be almost a dive in uh, people attending schools or knowing to attend. And I don't know, I personally don't know if that's, um, that part of that is because of technology coming up, you know, and that we have to come up to speed like Whitney said today, um, or, or what that is, but I think that that is going to turn around and shift because quite frankly, if the numbers don't come up, we're going to have a shortage of massage therapists in the and field. It, and honestly, it's looking like that already because this is some of the massage schools are closing down as well. As, and I know a massage MV in the, the area where I live, and they actually want to open up another clinic, but there's not enough therapists in that area. That's absolutely true, and, and I actually have jobs that have come by my desk at my own school and I can't fill them. So, you know, what does that tell you when you know, I had a panel the other day, a business panel, and I had a spa, day spa owner come, and she said, I got two openings. Uh, you know, I can't wait till you graduate in a month. <laughs> so I had automatic placement. It was, uh, you know, it was really amazing. And what makes it well, a great in instructor has to have creativity and really love what they do. Um, they have to be invested in the place that they're teaching, whether it's a CE provider or a, um, or a school. Um, and so they have to have all the pieces. They have to be detailed oriented and do the paperwork. And, and build the course objectives and make it clear for the student um, what it is that they're going to learn um, and, and be able to project that in a way that adult learners can take that in uh, and make it exciting. And that's a lot of hard work. It's not just punching punching it all. No, it's not. No. You have to constantly, because I remember for myself when I first went to I was reading every single thing I could so I want to stay way ahead of the students. Absolutely, absolutely. What makes a great student? Oh, one with an open mind. You know, if I had the ability to say, this is the student that I want, I would want, want one that had no judgment on the front, that was willing to be an open vessel and to be enthusiastic. And in some ways, um, students in school are very different from your CE provider students um, that takes the take those continuing education courses because they are already therapists and know what they're lacking and then they're looking for the education that will help them bump that up and, and help to um, move their course forward. Students in a massage school don't know what they're missing yet and they don't know that their education really is good until they get out. Um, and you know, I get I get uh, texts and emails and messages from my graduates about five or six years down the road. They say, you know what? Thank you for the education that that you gave me because I know now it was really good. You know, because they have something to measure it against. Yeah, especially when they talk to other parents when they get out in the field. Too. Exactly, and also their measure of success. Do they have clients? Are they getting clients? Are they being able to? have a career and, and uh, you know, take care of themselves in the career field. Yeah. And then, um, what are the alliance? I am. I'm a founding member of the Alliance for Massage Therapy Education and for the last three conferences I've been on the committee, the last two I've been on the conference planning committee as chair. So I've been planning these conferences for, for two conferences. Which is why you didn't see me last yeah. time at all. <laughs> You're way too, yeah. Because I was way too busy, yeah. and, and obviously, this would be the only way I could get here is if I was actually in between. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have like, you know, basically. <laughs> and, and where do you see the future of the Alliance going? Well, I'm very excited with um, many different aspects of the Alliance. One of them is the event called Meet the Authors, which was my brainchild. Uh, the fact that we had so many authors coming together, over 20 each time, um, that have written textbooks and, and uh, are active and creative and uh, are part of the vision of the future. And um, I would like to see the authors and the publishers and the, um, the, the media, the, uh, 
massaged in the magazines, uh, newspapers, all of those come together and look at how we can create things for the future. Um, uh, articles and what is missing in our future, how to teach people to write and, and what publishers are looking for, and what is missing within the educational aspects of, of massage therapy in the industry. I think that there is a real seed group here that of these people that are coming together that can provide a mechanism of, um, that will take us into the future. And so I see a, a lot, and that's only one aspect. Yeah, because for myself, I moved on um, January 2001. I got a book and syllabus on uh, Friday and started teaching it. Yeah. So I no teaching experience, no nothing. Right, the core competency for teaching is um, a document that is really loaded with information for teaching in this industry, and that is definitely a step forward for our, not just for the alliance, but for our industry itself. And then I'll work with people looking for your book. My book is Kinesiology for Manual Therapies, and uh, that took me four years to write. Uh, it's based on a philosophy of how to work uh, and on science, and uh, I embrace all different kinds of modalities based on the individuals on the table. So I go around the country and teach uh, how to work on different areas of the body uh, and the in-depth science of that area. The nitty gritty of the origins, insertions, actions, and muscles, how muscles work together in groups that are very opposition, the treatment protocol, those types of things, sequence, repetitive action, those are all part of what I do. It's uh, with McGraw Hill, it's available on Amazon, our website, and the school website. And uh, it's, it has, for those teaching, Individuals who want to teach kinesiology have lesson plans, testament, and um, all the ancillary. There's a PowerPoint, there's everything that goes with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really accessible by email as well as uh, through the school. I'm pretty visible. I can do um, teaching classes. I can consult, I can do whatever they need. Kinesiology is one thing that needs a little bit of a bump forward. It's not always included in schools, and it's it's one of the missing pieces that is going to lead towards more therapeutic work, more science. Science is the foundation of your art. Well, thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone.